Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a really, really exciting one. For those of you who follow me on social media, you probably already know this, but for those of you who don't, I did get engaged this past weekend. So today is Friday and we got engaged on Saturday. Since then, I've kind of been walking around in a really happy days. Uh, and so this video might be a little bit rambly. Uh, it's still kind of sinking in and I still can't quite believe it, but I thought I'd come in here and basically talk about the proposal. I did already detail it over on my blog, but I know that not everyone reads that, so I thought I would do a video about it as well. We do have a little bit of footage from the proposal as well, which is really cool. Uh, I will be talking about my ring and just other bits and bobs. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. So as a bit of context, I guess, uh, I knew we were going to get married. You know, Dan and I had discussed that and I knew that was something that we both wanted. I thought it was probably going to happen this year in terms of the engagement and I suspected it might happen in the next few months but really I had no idea. Dan refused to talk about you know timelines for the proposal and he was like no it'll happen when it happens so I was really flying blind I had no idea and I definitely did not think it was going to happen last weekend and it was just a very kind of ordinary weekend you know there was nothing special about it I was due to meet friends in central London for drinks and then Dan said to me do you want to meet up afterwards for dinner maybe we can go to Chinatown for Chinese I never actually eaten there so I was like sure great it was a beautiful day so I kind of wanted to spend it outside anyway and it was originally going to be brunch I think with my friends but I had to film earlier in the day so we moved it to afternoon drinks and we just went to Lincoln's and Fields which if you know central London then it's by Hoburn um, but it's right by my old university where all my friends went with me um, so we ended up just getting a bottle of Prosecco and drinking on the grass and it was really nice really casual and all the plans were very fluid so it wasn't regimented or anything like that which is why I think I didn't suspect anything because I would have thought that, you know, if you're going to stage a proposal, everything had to be very organised. But it was very much like, oh, we'll meet up when we meet up type thing. So I really, like, it wasn't out on my radar at all. If it had been, I probably would have put more thought into my appearance and I would have done my nails. I didn't have my nails done at all. And my friend actually said to me afterwards, she's known me for eight years. And she's like, in all those eight years, I don't think I've ever seen you without nail polish. And I was like, I know, because that just never happens. But that day I was running late. I didn't have time to do my nails. And it was just a random Saturday, like who cares? And of course it happens then. Um, but yeah, so it was super casual. Um, we had drinks, had a few glasses of Prosecco, feeling a bit tipsy, but in a very good mood. And Dan was like, Let's Let's meet in Leicester Square. So we walked down and my friends were going that way anyway to catch the tube and my friend Stanley, um, who's friends with Dan as well, was like, oh, I'll come say hi to Dan. So we're walking and then all of a sudden Stanley stops. He's like, you know what? The crowd looks really big. I'm just, I'm not going to bother. So I was like, okay, fine. So we said our goodbyes and Dan had texted me that he was watching a really great street performer. And so he was like, I'm in that kind of circle. He sent me a picture of where he was. So I saw the crowd was absolutely massive. So there was no, no missing it. And it took me a while to find him, found him, all good. And I watched for a couple of minutes, but I was pretty hungry at that point. So I was like, do you want to go grab dinner? And I was like, no, let's just wait a few more minutes. I'm really enjoying it. So I was like, okay, fine. The street performer whose name I actually have here, um, Christopher Thomas, um, I will, if he has a website I'll link it below otherwise I'll put his details because he was absolutely amazing and he was in on the whole thing and so uh, Chris was doing some kind of um, wheelie thing, it's kind of hard to describe but he finished up that and then he was like to everyone don't go anywhere because the show is not over yet so he was like we need a big strong man as a volunteer and Dan was like oh should I do it? I was like go on you obviously really enjoyed it go ahead and volunteer so Dan goes up and then Chris was like to Dan do you have anyone with you and Dan pointed to me I was like no, like, I do not like being the centre of attention. I don't like things like that. So I was like, definitely not. And they kept saying, no, come up, come up. Um, and of course, because I'd had a few glasses of Prosecco, which apparently was key to this plan. Um, so my friends were in on it. Dan was like, make sure that she has a bit to drink. So I was like, okay, why not? So I went up and... I was presented with a wooden box which I had to try and open only I couldn't because it was locked and Chris was like check your pockets for a key so I was checking my pockets and there was nothing there and he was like no check again checked again still wasn't anything there and I was a bit 
like has this magic trick gone wrong I wasn't sure and it turns out that Dan had been pointing to towards what Chris thought was my back pockets but Dan had actually put the key in my handbag um, but he was pointing and Chris just misunderstood and so I was like in the end look all I had in my pockets was an oyster card and then he finally cottoned on and he was like checking your bag so I checked my bag and there was the key and so I managed to open the box and I think I don't know exactly when because even when I was invited to go up, you know, in the street performer circle, I still had no idea because I remember being very concerned that because he had specifically said he wanted a big strong man to help, that I was going to have to try and lift something and I'm really like physically weak so I was very concerned that it was going to be embarrassing because I wasn't going to be able to lift the thing that he wanted me to. Um, so that was my main concern and then I was, I don't even think I was suspicious but when I needed to open the jewelry box or the wooden box which was a jewelry box then I think I was beginning to think could this be it um, but then I turned the jewelry box to its side to try and open it and then Chris was like no no don't turn it I bought this today I don't want you to ruin it and so I was like oh gosh and that's when I thought oh well if there was a ring inside then obviously you know it wouldn't matter if you turned it so I was like that is it this is just a magic trick so I was like fine um, so I opened it and then I opened the lid and then inside were the words turn around and as I turned around I heard the crowd gasp and then Dan was there on one knee proposing and then after that it was kind of a blur and I'm glad we had the video because honestly I don't think I even remembered what happened it was just so crazy and I think I was expecting Dan to put the ring on which he didn't but we kind of embraced and then he took me off to the side he's like let's go somewhere quiet and I was like you didn't put the ring on and he looked at me he's like I don't think you said yes and I know Chris said to the crowd she said yes but apparently I didn't actually say yes and I'm like I was waiting for Dan to ask this question for how many years and the one time he does I forget to say yes and it's like of course I forget to say yes so I didn't actually accept but Dan knew obviously Dan knew that I was going to say yes um, and then my mum it turns out was hiding in the crowd as well so she jumps out my friends were there and it was just absolutely amazing. Um, we went for drinks after that uh, to the Common Garden Hotel which was my favourite hotel so we had some champagne and it was just kind of the warmest fuzziest time. We called our friends, um, Dan's mum and everyone and it was just amazing um, and then after drinks Dan and I went to a dinner at Cut which is one of our favourite uh, London restaurants which we went to on our second anniversary I think so all a bit of a daze but it was just incredible I did not think he was going to do it in such a public way and my mum was saying to him it's like why would you do something so elaborate um, and I was like well I didn't want to do a restaurant or anything like that and he just really went for it um, and I think I kind of thought that if Dan was ever going to plan something he's not a natural organizer you know he doesn't like doing things like that and I'm definitely the more organized of the two and I just thought that I would suspect something like I would hear about something I didn't think he'd be that good at hiding it and this just totally caught me off guard like it was just it was crazy so I'm going to insert uh, a bit of footage now where you can actually see the moment that it happened uh, it's a little bit wobbly but hopefully you'll be able to make it out anyway is that not is that not opening yeah. um, check uh, check your pockets uh, you might have a key in there you, just check, just look for me, babe. I'm trying my hardest. We're ending the show on a real good note right now. Just check. Check, check your back pocket, maybe. You have an oyster guard. It's may, maybe in your bag. Check your bag. Woo. She does, she's got a key, everybody. I'm also a magician, right? Thought the show was over. So, Amy, open the box. Very, I bought this today and it's like throwing it around. I'll play this way.
And then here is the actual box as well. And um, this is Dan's box that he bought and so that I thought you might want to keep it, which I do. I'm so glad he has it. And this was the key that was hiding away in my bag. And the inside are just two cut out that's saying turn around. And I think, bless him, he aged this. Yeah, so I think he stained it with coffee like he did in school and then put it under the grill to make it look all aged. I was like, attention to detail, oh my goodness. So I thought that was amazing. I'm so glad he kept it. Um, so yeah, as I said, quite the surprise. Did not think he'd do anything like that. Uh, really caught me off guard, but it was just, it was just so amazing. On to the ring, I don't think you're already going to be able to see it that clearly there, but I'll try and insert a close-up of me wearing it. And Dan actually has a very good video just on its own without anyone wearing it. Um, and that, I think he took that before we got engaged, because uh, I think he sent it to everyone. Literally all my friends and family were in on the engagement, so everyone knew before I did. And then when I went to tell everyone, they're like, we know. <laughs> um, but it was just, it was amazing. So everyone kind of saw it and he used that video to show people. So it's really clear. So if I can figure out how to, I will try and insert that. Um, but I love it. It was made by one of our really good friends. Well, he's actually a friend of Dan's from school, but now I know him quite well. We went to his wedding last year, so it was really cool that he was a part of this. And he has a jewellery store in Birmingham, and he's just the most talented jeweller. He can literally make anything. He also made the necklace that I wear a lot. I always get asked about that too, and he actually custom made that for me as well. Um, and so... He made this, he did an incredible job, and I had browsed engagement rings before, just to show Dan kind of what I liked, um, and then Dan took that and ran with it, and came up with this, which has just blown me away. It has exceeded every expectation I had. Not that I really had any, because I didn't really allow myself to think about it, but I just absolutely love it. So. It's a um, simple, well, it's simple. It's a platinum setting, and what I love about it is that it looks like a very simple setting from the surface, but then when you turn it, it has all this amazing detail, and I just think it's so beautiful. It has little diamonds all the way around, and then the center stone is a brilliant round cut diamond but because of the prongs it kind of looks a bit cushion cut as well which I love because those are my two favorite styles so I feel like I kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, I do know the specifications of the diamond and I have gotten a few questions about that but I don't know what the done thing here is. I've never been engaged before, so I don't know if you're supposed to say what the etiquette is. I don't mind, and I asked Dan, he was like, yeah, say, like I'm sure they're gonna wanna know, but I don't know if that's like a major faux pas. So let me know in the comment section below what the etiquette is if you happen to know, and if you guys wanna know. We are going to be doing a and a a couples q and A. I think not tomorrow, but the next day. So if you have any questions, um, either for me or for Dan or as a couple about the, engagement wedding or anything really it doesn't have to be related to the wedding and um, then let us know in the comment section below and then we'll go through and answer some so be filming that in a day and a half slash two days um so yeah so that's pretty much it about the ring uh, i think i probably mentioned but i am absolutely over the moon with it i'm terrified that i'm going to lose that i'm getting insurance on monday um but it's been the scariest week i've never worn anything this valuable before so I mean, so scared that it's going to drop down the sink or something, and oh my goodness, so I'm very much looking forward to it being insured, but um, yeah, I am, I'm pretty much on cloud nine. <laughs> So I think that's about it. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to say. I will be doing a wedding series. I did get a few questions about that as well. I've been looking forward to doing this for ages. I love planning events anyway. It's what I do for work and this is the ultimate event to me. So I am so excited. I have already been pinning away on Pinterest. So if you want to follow me on Pinterest, I'll leave my details down below. Um, but I am going to be doing a wedding series. I'm going to be doing a wedding Wednesdays on the blog. So every single Wednesday, I'll be doing a wedding related post but I'll also be doing videos I'm not going to be doing videos as frequently because I know that's not everyone's cup of tea I know not everyone will be interested in that and I don't want to bore you guys so I think that will be once every few weeks there's not really going to be a set schedule but as and when there's something I kind of want to update you on or maybe take you wedding dress shopping or something like that um, but yeah it's already early stages we don't really have anything firmed up we're probably going to get married abroad not really far away but probably in Europe we're looking at France at the moment um, but that's really it I ordered my wedding planner the other day and I received that um, and I'm very excited to start using it and just getting really stuck into the whole process and 
actually in about an hour's time we're going to go look at a venue for the engagement party as well so lots of really exciting things i also wanted to say a massive thank you for all your well wishes we were totally overwhelmed by them and it really just made a very special time even better so thank you so much to everyone who reached out and said congratulations um it has just been the most amazing week so thank you very much I will probably leave it there. I think I've waffled a lot. Apologies if I talked really fast. I know I talk fast anyway when I get excited. I talk even faster, um, but yeah. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.